In this video, I will show you how to find the dot product of two vectors, and I'll show you how to use that dot product to find the angle between two vectors, and thus determine whether two vectors are parallel or perpendicular, also known as orthogonal. The dot product of two vectors v and w is given by this formula, where this is vector v and this is vector w. Notice that vector v could be written like this, and vector w could be written like this. A dot product is just a number, called a scalar, and not a vector. For example, if this is u and this is v, then the dot product will be 5 times negative 3 plus 12 times 2. In other words, negative 15 plus 24, which is 9. If this is u and this is v, then the dot product will be 3 times 7 plus 4 times negative 2. So that's 21 minus 8, which is 13. We can use dot product to find the angle between two vectors using this formula. The cosine of the angle between two vectors u and v will be the dot product of u and v divided by the product of the magnitudes of u and v. For example, given this vector u and vector v, say I want to find the angle between u and v, I would start by finding the dot product of u times v. So in this case that would be 2 times 4 plus negative 1 times 3. Well, that's 8 minus 3, which is 5. Next, let's find the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v. So the magnitude of vector u is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. So the square root of 4 plus negative 1 squared is 1. In other words, the magnitude of u is radical 5. Similarly, the magnitude of vector v is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. So that's the square root of 16 plus 9. That's 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. I want you to memorize this formula. The cosine of theta is going to be the dot product of u and v, which is 5, divided by the product of the magnitudes of u and v. So that's 5 radical 5. Obviously these 5's are going to cancel each other out, leaving behind 1 over radical 5. So if I want to find angle theta, I'm going to take the arc cosine of both sides. So theta will equal the arc cosine of 1 over radical 5. By the way, arc cosine is the same as inverse cosine. You can just type this into your calculator. So theta is about 63.435 degrees. So that's how you can use dot product to find the angle between two vectors. Let's find the angle between these two vectors v and w. We will start by finding the dot product of v times w. That's going to be 3 times 6 plus 2 times 4. That is 18 plus 8, which is 26. Next we need to find the magnitude of vector v and the magnitude of vector w. The magnitude of v will be the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. So that's the square root of 9 plus 4, which equals the square root of 13. How about the magnitude of w? That's going to be the square root of 6 squared plus 4 squared. In other words, the square root of 36 plus 16. 
this is the square root of 52, but 52 is 4 times 13. In other words, 2 radical 13. According to the formula, we can find the angle between vector v and w by starting with cosine theta equals the dot product of v times w, which is 26, divided by the product of the magnitude of v and the magnitude of w. That will be 2 radical 13 times radical 13. Notice that 2 goes into 26 13 times. So we have a 13 in the numerator. Then notice that radical 13 times radical 13 is 13. Obviously, 13 divided by 13 is 1, so we have cosine theta is equal to 1. Well, what about theta itself? We know that on the unit circle, cosine is the x value. So where will the x value equal 1? That's going to be right here at an angle of 0. So theta equals zero degrees. By the way, if the angle between two vectors is zero degrees, it means they are pointing in the same direction, like this. Let's talk about parallel vectors. Here are two parallel vectors, u and v. Parallel vectors will overlap if you position them so that they share an initial point. In this position, it's easier to see that Vector v is just a scalar multiple of vector u. For example, perhaps vector v equals 1.2 times vector u. Obviously, the angle between these vectors is 0 degrees. So we can say theta equals 0 degrees, which implies that cosine theta is equal to 1 but two vectors will also be parallel if they have opposite directions. In this case, the angle between them is 180 degrees. In other words, theta equals 180, which implies that cosine theta will equal negative one because the cosine of 180 is negative one. So we've learned that if cosine is the angle between vector u and vector v, u is parallel to v if and only if the cosine of theta equals plus or minus one. Orthogonal is another word for perpendicular. So orthogonal vectors are vectors that are perpendicular, meaning the angle between them is 90 degrees. If theta is 90 degrees, that means cosine of theta is zero degrees. But remember that cosine theta is equal to this expression, and a fraction can only equal zero if the numerator is equal to zero. So cosine theta will equal zero only if the dot product is equal to zero. So vectors are only orthogonal, perpendicular, if their dot product is zero. Let's determine if the following vectors are orthogonal, parallel, or neither. Let's start with these two vectors. We will call the first one vector u and the second one vector v. The dot product of u times v is 1 times 2 plus 2 times negative 1. That's 2 minus 2, which equals 0. This means that vector u and vector v are orthogonal. Again, this is because if the dot product of u times v is equal to zero, that means cosine theta, which has the dot product in the numerator, must equal zero, which means that theta itself must be 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 is theta. And that means that the vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal. I don't want you to have to go through that thought process every time. So just memorize that if the dot product is zero, 
the vectors are orthogonal. Now let's figure out whether these two vectors are orthogonal, parallel, or neither. We will again begin by finding the dot product of u times v. That's going to be 3 times 4 plus 2 times negative 3. In other words, 12 minus 6, which is 6. We already know they are not orthogonal because the dot product was not equal to 0. So let's keep going and find the magnitude of vector u which is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. That's the square root of 9 plus 4, which is the square root of 13. Similarly, the magnitude of vector v will be the square root of 4 squared plus negative 3 squared. That's the square root of 16 plus 9. That's the square root of 25, which is 5. Cosine theta will equal the dot product, which is 6, divided by the product of the magnitudes. So that's divided by 5 radical 13. This tells us that vector u and vector v are neither orthogonal nor parallel. If they were parallel, then cosine theta would equal positive or negative 1. Let's go ahead and do these last two vectors, starting with the dot product of u times v. This will be 6 times 3 plus 4 times 2. This is 18 plus 8 which is 26. The magnitude of vector u is the square root of 6 squared plus 4 squared. In other words, the square root of 36 plus 16, which gives radical 52. 52 is 4 times 13. So this simplifies down to 2 radical 13. Similarly, the magnitude of vector v is the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. In other words, the square root of 9 plus 4, which gives the square root of 13. Cosine theta will equal the dot product over the magnitude product. So that's 26 over 2 radical 13 times radical 13. 2 goes into 26 13 times. And radical 13 times radical 13 is 13. This tells us that cosine theta is equal to 1. If cosine theta equals 1 or negative 1, we know the two vectors are parallel. Again, this is because if cosine theta is equal to 1, that means that theta must be 0. Cosine of 0 is equal to 1. Looking back, we can also tell that vector u and vector v are parallel because vector u is a scalar multiple of vector v. Specifically, u is just 2 times vector v. Look back, vector u is 6, 4, while vector v is 3, 2. If you took vector v and just multiplied by 2, that would give you 6, 4. I'd like to end this video by showing you a connection between dot products and magnitude. Consider vector v, which is a comma b. The magnitude of vector v would be the square root of a squared plus b squared. But notice that magnitude could be easily written as the square root of a times a plus b times b. But wait a minute. Consider the dot product of vector v times itself. That would be 
vector a comma b times a comma b. But according to the dot product formula, this would be a times a plus b times b. But that's what we have under the radical. So the magnitude of vector v is the square root of the dot product of v times itself.